enables us to identify the birds without having to catch them, which is actually kind of quite useful for some kinds of studies. So actually that's the thing we introduced. This actually helps us to do even less disturbance than we did because with a little antenna around the nest box, you can work out which bird there is without even having to catch it and read its, its ring number. So. And you ring them as young? Uh, yeah, so we ring the young birds in the nest and then that's really useful because we know exactly when they were born, where they were born, and then we can track them all the way through their lives potentially. And we also catch the parent birds or actually identify them without catching them these days. And then we can link together parents and offspring and so on. So. And couldn't you have found a more interesting species to study like <laughs> wolves or guppies? There are some beautiful examples of some, well, as Neela mentioned, some species are seeing very large repertoires and the marsh warbler is a great example of this. A very nondescript looking brown bird. Um, but these are birds that migrate to Africa um, for the winter. And actually, if you're a really skilled bird watcher, if you know African birds, you can have a marsh warbler singing in Europe that is singing the songs of maybe dozens of African species. So you can actually pinpoint sort of where it's been in Africa from you know, if you know enough about the distribution of the birds there. And that's that's wow. phenomenal. They carry this kind of you know, cultural information yes. from Africa back to um back to the UK and then sing this sing these songs. They they weave them into their kind of their songs which they're you know you they're singing in some damp meadow somewhere in Europe. So that's <laughs> yes. pretty amazing. 